Hi, this is the Science Chef again. Today we will be looking at the third and concluding part of our series on electrochemistry titled Electrochemical Cells. Please go nowhere as we'll be right back after this break. An electrochemical cell is generally a device used in the interconversion of electrical and chemical energy. It can either be an electrolytic cell or voltameter or a galvanic or voltaic cell. To learn more about electrolytic cells, check the link in the description. Our focus in this video shall be on the galvanic cells. A galvanic or voltaic cell is a device that converts chemical energy to electrical energy. It can also be said to be a device that uses chemical changes to produce electricity. It is named after Ligui, Galvani and Alessandro Volta, the two scientists who constructed the early versions of the device. The components of a typical galvanic cell are similar to those of an electrolytic cell and include the anode, cathode and electrolyte. However, unlike the electrolytic cell, the galvanic cell contains a voltmeter and a salt bridge or porous partition. The anode is the negative electrode where oxidation occurs, while the cathode is a positive electrode where reduction occurs. Electrons are lost from the anode and flow to the cathode. You may need to watch our tutorial on the introduction to electrode potential to understand how the anode and cathode become negatively and positively charged. The voltmeter is used for measuring the EMF of the cell or the potential difference between the two half cells while the salt bridge is the porous material that allows the movement of ions in and out of the electrolytes of the two half cells in order to maintain electrical neutrality and complete the cell circuit. The simplest form of a salt bridge is an inverted U-tube containing an inert electrolyte solution such as potassium chloride or ammonium nitrate whose ions will not react with other ions in solution or with the electrodes. There are two types of galvanic cells, the primary cells and the secondary cells. Primary cells are those devices that cannot be recharged once they are used up. In other words, their reactions are irreversible and they have a short lifespan. While secondary cells are those devices that can be recharged when used up because their reactions are reversible and they do have a longer lifespan than primary cells. Secondary cells are also called storage cells. Examples of primary cells are the Daniel and Luclanchi cells. While some common examples of secondary cells are the lead accumulator, that's your car battery, the lithium ion battery, which is your phone battery, the nickel ion battery, and so on. Let's look at some of these cells in details. The Daniel cell is made up of two half cells, namely the zinc half cell and the copper half cell. The anode is made up of a zinc rod immersed in zinc sulfate solution in a porous pot, while the cathode is a copper vessel containing copper 2 sulfate. The porous pot allows the movement of ions in and out of the zinc and copper 2 ions electrolytes. At the anode, the zinc atoms become oxidized to zinc ions by losing two electrons each. The electrons flow through the external circuit or connecting wire to the copper half cell. The copper 2 ions gain the electrons and become reduced to copper atoms which are deposited on the cathode. The flow of the electrons from the anode to the cathode is electric current. It is due to the difference in the electric potentials of the two half cells and does some work like lighting a bulb or powering a transistor radio. Meanwhile in the solutions, the zinc, copper 2 and potassium cations move towards the cathode while the sulfate and chloride anions move towards the anode through the porous partition in order to maintain electrical neutrality of the cell. A fully operational Daniel cell has a cell potential of about 1.1 volt. The cell stops working when the zinc anode stops losing electrons to the copper 2 ions. This would possibly occur when all the zinc atoms in the electrode have been converted to zinc ions. In the Luclanchi cell, the anode is made up of a zinc container while the cathode is a carbon rod immersed in manganese 4 oxide powder. The electrolyte is an ammonium chloride solution in the wet cell or ammonium chloride paste in the dry cell. The carbon rod and manganese 4 oxide are separated from the electrolyte by a muslin bag which acts as the porous partition. The Luclanchi cell is the common TV remote control battery you use in your homes. At the anode, the zinc atom undergoes oxidation to form zinc ions. The electrons lost travel through the wire 
to the cathode, the ammonium ions gain the electrons and become reduced to ammonia and hydrogen gases. The hydrogen gas can adhere to the surface of the cathode. This is known as polarization. To prevent this, the manganese 4 oxide acts as a depolarizer and removes the hydrogen gas by oxidizing it to water as it is being formed. A fully operational Leclanchy cell has an EMF of about 1.5 volts. For optimal output, the positions of elements or metals used as electrodes in a galvanic cell must be reasonably apart in the electrochemical series. If you would like to watch a tutorial on how to calculate the EMF of a cell, check the link in the description. Let's study the lead accumulator as a secondary cell. In this cell, the anode is a lead metal, the cathode is lead 4 oxide, and the electrolyte is dilute sulfuric acid solution. Being a secondary cell, the lead accumulator undergoes two processes, discharging and recharging. The cell discharges when it is producing electricity. During this process, the lead atoms in the anode lose two electrons each and are oxidized to lead two ions. The electrons flow through the external circuit to the cathode, doing some work like starting a car engine, lighting the car lamps, powering the car radio, and so on. At the cathode, the lead 4 oxide and hydrogen ions from the electrolyte gain the electrons to form lead 2 ions and water. The lead 2 ions combine with the sulfate ions in the electrolyte to form lead 2 sulfate, which gets deposited on the two electrodes as seen on the screen. At this point, the density of the sulfuric acid decreases to about 1.15 grams per cm cube due to the absorption of the hydrogen and sulfate ions from the electrolyte and the EMF of the cell drops to about 1.8 volts. When this happens, we say the cell has run down and needs to be recharged. During recharging, the redox reactions and roles of the electrodes are reversed because it is an electrolytic process. So the anode in the discharge cell becomes the cathode, while the cathode becomes the anode. The anode and cathode of an external DC power source are connected to the cathode and anode of the discharge cell respectively. The passage of electric current through the cell causes the lead 2 sulfate deposits at the electrodes to break down into lead 2 and sulfate ions as seen on the screen. At the anode, lead 2 ions from the lead 2 sulfate lose electrons and combine with water to produce lead 4 oxide and hydrogen ions while the lead 2 ions at the cathode gain the 2 electrons and become reduced to metallic lead. The sulfate ions combine with the hydrogen ions to regenerate the sulfuric acid electrolyte. After a while, the density of the acid increases to its initial value of about 1.25 grams per cm cube due to the release of hydrogen and sulfate ions into the solution, while the cell EMF returns to the initial value of about 2.1 volts. At this point, we say the battery is fully charged. It is important to note that a car battery is made up of six of these lead accumulator cells connected in series, hence the total output voltage of about 12 volts. Other secondary cells work based on similar principles. In our next tutorial, we will be starting a new series on the gas laws. Endeavor to stay notified by subscribing and turning on the notification bell.